Stephen and Carol on the funeral service just wrapping up here, out here in Milford. I can tell you that it's been a tough afternoon for the people here, especially the fellow firefighters. As the Monsignor said during the services, especially difficult for those who are with Ron at that very moment. And certainly as the firefighters were gathered for that training session and as they watched one of their own fall and tried to respond immediately to him and, and unsuccessfully because there was nothing that could really have been done. How can that be not troubling? Many of those firefighters were here this afternoon feeling more pain than anyone could you imagine. The, the sermon put it all you know into love, perspective. And we do grieve because there's gonna be a great hole in the life of so many people. We all recognized Ron Savage from being on Detroit TV screens for almost two decades, but he never carried that would-be star power with him as he interacted with people, all people. He made you feel special. And in most of the cases, he was the big shot in the room. You know, he's a well-known reporter, and yet he even made a janitor feel like he was a celebrity. And you can see some of the firefighters here also ride bikes. You can see this guy has axemen on the back of his coat. I was at the visitation last night. Some of the other guys, some of the other bikers, firefighters are nozzlemen. You know, Ron Savage used to have a favorite saying, top job. But get this, he was 63 years old, a firefighter, a newsman, a husband, a father. What a life. Hmm. Top job, Ron. <laughs> You'll be missed. Guys, back to you. Yeah, he certainly will be missed. You could hear all of his colleagues and friends say only beautiful things about this man. And I thought some prayers again go out to his wife and his young son, who will soon be heading off to college. Jim, thank you so much. They're asking for donations to be made, by the way, for a college fund for that young son. Uh, Jim, thank you for that report. And, uh, 